of Tuskegee and boy, I have never been prouder to say those words. But today, I am also proud to be an American. Proud to be in the presence of iconic American heroes. So let us please stand and applaud the Tuskegee Airmen. Airmen, original airmen in our presence today, along with their families, and we certainly want to thank them for, for being here. Did my microphone come yes, uh, Did it just come back on? Yes. Okay, good, yes. uh, as we acknowledge, though, we are in the presence of greatness today. And gosh, what can we say about the Tuskegee Airmen and the fact that an iconic American director, producer, chose to honor them with a film that will just tell their story, that courage and that patriotism, and reintroduce it to today's generation. So we certainly want to thank Lucasfilms and everybody who had a hand in putting this event together today for bringing us all together. Reading to the microphone, Dr. Gilbert Rochon, so I'm going to step aside and ask that you give your attention to the gentleman who is leading Tuskegee University. While he's standing up, let me also introduce the mayor of Tuskegee, wow. Omar, the Honorable Omar Neal. And also, uh, I see uh, uh, sitting at my left hand here, uh, another legend of uh, the Civil Rights Movement and of Tuskegee, Ms. Amelia Boynton Robinson, who just recently celebrated her 100th birthday. And was one of the survivors of the march on the Edmund Pettus Bridge yeah, in Selma. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we also have with us today, uh, sitting somewhere over here, uh, Mike Rabb, who came here when he was 13 years old, is now uh, 95, and worked for every president of Tuskegee University, except for Booker T. Washington and myself. Oh. <laughs> and for 30 years, he directed the Johnny Andrews Hospital. Yes, yes. So in front of witnesses, I wanted to say to him, that we're going to have to change that story because we're in the process of establishing a 24-hour uh, care facility uh, jointly with the city, Macon County, the VA, and Tuskegee University. And we need Mr. Rabb's uh, paid consultation on that project. So, so now he'll, he'll have to say that the only president he didn't work for was Booker T. Washington. <laughs> But um, uh, we also have with us uh, two of the uh, actors in Red Tails, and we're very grateful for their presence, and we're very grateful for their service on this most historic film, which sheds light on not only the valor and patriotism of African Americans during a most difficult time, but also their, their insistence that we be treated it properly as human beings and as citizens of this country once they got back home. Gentlemen. And I believe they've made it here from the chapel already, and that would be the original Tuskegee Airmen. So if they're here back from the chapel, please, uh, uh, please stand and be acknowledged. And even if they don't stand, let's acknowledge, oh, come in. They're coming in the door right now.
We're very grateful for your service, gentlemen, and not only that, but for your uh, continued connectivity with the university. And uh, I think that, that it's uh, certainly fitting, as we just indicated in the chapel, uh, that uh, we also uh, reestablish a training program here at Tuskegee in piloting aircraft mechanics and air traffic control to go along with the fact that we're the only HBCU with an accredited program in aerospace engineering. I'm retired Air Force Colonel Roosevelt J. Lewis, Jr., president of our local Tuskegee Airmen chapter and a graduate of Detachment 015, Tuskegee University. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the next most important thing is to introduce another of our Tuskegee Airmen, Lieutenant Colonel Herbert Eugene Carter and the Carter family. Red Tail Three. Red Tail Three. Ladies and gentlemen, stand up and give him a hand too. Red Tail Three, the maintenance engineering officer for the entire period of the war for the Tuskegee Airmen, Lieutenant Colonel Carter. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is amazing, but we are having uh, just a great day. Let me also introduce another Tuskegee Airman, shall I say Airwoman. Oh. Pete, you're in the house. Pete Dryden, Nurse Dryden, the original Tuskegee Airwoman. Ladies and gentlemen, all the way here, you will see in the movie the love story of Charles Truck Dryden, married a nurse that uh, saw him at the dance the night before he was supposed to leave for the war. What a love story. And Pete, as she is known to her fellow airmen, are indeed here. Ladies and gentlemen, on this august occasion, and this is awfully special, we indeed have had a long wait. We have had a very long wait. I marvel when after 60 years, we could indeed have the airmen recognized. I marvel after 50 years, when the United States Air Force recognized that the Tuskegee Airmen won the top gun competition, the first one in the United States Air Force, by 24 points, and they were not acknowledged. 1949. 1949, your Tuskegee Airmen won the first Air Force Top Gun competition by 24 points at Nellis Air Force Base in Nevada. It took 50 years to correct that indiscretion in my Air Force. Ladies and gentlemen, many years later, I'd like to acknowledge also that in 1993, a young man won the Top Gun competition and he looks like most of us. Would you stand up, young man, report in to me, and I want the world to see, once again, the Tuskegee Airman legacy lives. He flies for UPS today with 384 hours in the airplane, an F-16 Alpha model. Mm. This young man went out to Nellis and did what the Tuskegee Airmen did in 1949. Go ahead. Yes, 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 yes. Bravo. Ladies and gentlemen, not only that, this young man came to Tuskegee after he did that, and with his F-16, pulled a 9G turn over the intersection with my standing there working him on the radio as the air boss, and standing next to me was C. Alfred Anderson, the chief flight instructor of the airman, with tears running down his cheeks. I know he was. That's your mind. He then pulled out of the 9G turn kicked her vertically, and at 230 in afterburner, went into the sky, out of sight. An unrestricted A.B. Klein. Introduce yourself to this crowd and tell them what you do now. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, 
Let me tell you the sense of humor that God has. I was sitting in my grandparents' house this morning in Montgomery, Alabama, and I read the newspaper, and the newspaper was talking about this event down here, the church uh, program and the lunch. And so I said, well, let me drive down there and see what's going on. So I come down here and I go to church and get a phenomenal message from the pastor there this morning. And next thing I know, I run into Colonel Lewis, and next thing I know, I'm standing up in front of all you people. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, this was not planned for me today, but uh, uh, Kevin K.T. Smith, born and raised in Montgomery, Alabama, attended Alabama State University, attended uh, Alabama State University Detachment 019 RTC program, uh, finished school and went straight into the Air Force. As a navigator, uh, ran into a gentleman uh, at the time called Colonel Fig Newton, uh, and Colonel Newton uh, took me under his wing, mentored me, and said, go to navigator school, do well, and then you'll get your shot at going to pilot training the Air Force. And everything happened exactly the way that God planned and that uh, he planned. And uh, I ended up uh, meeting General Scott Mays, uh, at the time, Lieutenant Colonel Scott Mays, who was commander of the Alabama Air National Guard. And General Mays believed in me and said, listen, the Alabama National Guard is going to bag you going to pilot train at the Williams Air Force Base. And I gave that man my word that I would not only make it through training, but I would do exceptionally well. And in May 1992, I graduated from Williams Air Force Base in Phoenix, Arizona, and got my wings uh, to go off to F-16 training. Go ahead. And probably the next greatest moment of my life is when he came out there in an F-16, got off the airplane, and I shook his hand, and he said, young man, you did exactly what you told me you were going to do. Oh, and yeah, the rest has kind of been history. I ended up coming back here to Alabama and got recognized by the Alabama State Legislature for being the first black fighter pilot in the 50-year history of the Alabama Air National Guard. And I was the first. Uh, right. Right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. They, had, they had sent three gentlemen before me, and none of them had made it through the training. I was the first to make it all the way through the training. Uh, Colonel Lewis, Colonel Carter, I cannot tell you people, the people that bagged me and supported me. Uh, Colonel Lewis uh, took, this, took me, put his arms around me, introduced me to Chief. Chief Anderson took me up on probably about three or four flights before I went to pilot training to make sure that I had my stuff together to get ready to go. So when I showed up at Williams Air Force, I was like, I'm good to go. And the rest is history, but just blessed. God has been good to me. I cannot tell you people how, when you strap an airplane on your back and you go through, through the sound barrier and you go to 40, 50,000 feet and you go to foreign countries and you see people trying to shoot at you and blow you out of the sky and here you are trying to drop bombs on your targets, that you just know that God is with you. And oh, yes. when you get back on the ground, you walk back to the queues where we stay at, and I would just say a prayer. Yes. And just say, hey, Lord, thank you. Yes. Uh, if I do it again, get me back down on the ground again. Yes. Yes. But I'm not going to take up any time. Thank you all, Colonel Carter, from one fighter pilot to another. I love you so much. Yes, thank, yes. Thanks for opening up the doors of opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Kevin T. Smith, KT, fighter pilot, first flight pilot to fly fighters for the Alabama National Guard. Ladies and gentlemen, very special day. Let's get started.
this rare tail experience uh, represent today? Is I personally made a point to get here before this morning to be a part of this legendary event. The Tuskegee Airmen laid the foundation. They were at the father of the Civil Rights Movement before there were any Dr. Kings, Rosa Parks, before there were uh, any um, laws, the Jim Crow laws that were dispelled and uh, uh, just done away with. The Red Tails, from what I understand and I've worked and talked with many of them for the past 20 years, they were the real civil rights um, the character of Torch for civil rights, so to speak, and coming to see this movie and meeting some of the airmen again, like such as Colonel uh, Herbert Carter and um, uh, Colonel Roosevelt Lewis, who spearheaded this whole thing. Uh, my congratulations to them. I salute them. I salute Colonel Carter because of what he did in the 99th Squadron, um, the things I've read and the things I've talked to him about over the year, many years, and just the support that they gave America and what America doesn't understand. And I understood, and I, uh, Chief, I, I, want to, I just heard about this this morning, that nobody wanted to support George Lucas in his venture to do this movie. They said they didn't I want read to support an all-black uh, uh, movie. It would not fly. This is going to be one of the biggest blockbusters of all time. I know it is. I feel I've seen the trailers when I was out in California and in New York recently. But it brought tears on me this morning oh, just yes. watching the trailer. Just watching the trailer. So what, what I'm here to say and what I'd like to say, Chief, is that I'm just honored to be here and I'm glad a part of it. This, this is a historical moment. This is history right now as we stand at this moment, this second, and I am proud to be here. Mayor Neal, how are you doing this morning, Chief? I'm doing absolutely incredible, supersonic. All right. What does this event mean for Tuskegee and the world? You know, I, I think it, it reminds us that, um, that failure is never an option and that no matter what the obstacles are in life, that with faith and with commitment and excellence you can overcome. And so this is a lesson for the world uh, and the Tuskegee Airmen through their tenacity and stick to have given us a great example of what is possible if you only believe and that you work as a team. What should the community do now to make sure that this movie gets the most mileage? Well, one is I think we should reflect the same excellence that the Tuskegee Airmen reflected. Uh, I think that the more congruent we are with the spirit of the Tuskegee Airmen, which is the spirit of excellence and service, the better mileage it will get, not just in terms of the patronage of the movie, but also the residual effects of people, tourism, and people coming to see this wonderful hallowed ground by which the Tuskegee Airmen actually uh, operated and had their being. Now, if we do not attend this movie, and if we do not take our children to see this movie, this movie won't amount to very much. Absolutely. In what, fact, what's to wait on us now to absolutely. make sure that that happens? We have to do it, and we have to do it for many reasons. One is what it does to inspire our young people. I believe that you can't be it unless you see it and that what the Tuskegee Airmen actually do is expand the realm of possibility for our young people. So I think that it will serve each of, no, let me say this, I know it will serve each of our children well to see people who look like them doing wonderful and great things. That's the first thing. Secondly, uh, Mr. Lucas spent a lot of money, his own money. He couldn't find uh, sponsors. He couldn't find people to invest us, to invest in this movie, because they said it wouldn't uh, sell, it was not a market for it. Well, if it's not a market for us, it won't be a market for anyone else. So we should show in as larger numbers as humanly possible that it means something to us and thus will mean something to the world. So I encourage everyone to go out and, and watch this movie. Take your family, take your church, take your friends, take everybody that you know with you. Wear red in solidarity with the struggle of the Tuskegee Airmen as you sit in the movie theater and, and, and watch yourself, watch your genesis, show the world what we're capable of. Mr. Lucas had the vision, but these actors in this movie were out of sight. What, don't Absolutely. you think so? Absolutely. You know, but do you know, Tuskegee is not just a place. Tuskegee is a spirit. And I think what they did was they captured that spirit of Tuskegee in, in, a, in a very, very uh, significant way. And so we are appreciative of everyone who's had a hand in bringing this uh, movie to fruition. 
It is a great movie. It is what you call a must-see. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thank you. First of all, I think it's a, a reflection of what has happened in this community and the, the greatness of this community. And so often people, I find that people in Tuskegee really do not have a real catch or a real glimpse of the, the importance of the Tuskegee community. The Tuskegee Airmen, of course, being just one of those elements. I also think that the entire weekend is motivational, particularly for the young people. Uh, one of the things I promised to do is to get a copy of the uh, Double Victory film where the airmen told their story themselves. And I'm going to put that copy in every school library in Macon County because I want the students to know what the airmen were up against, but in spite of how they succeeded. I also think that it might be a new day for revisiting re, uh, um, pilot training, as the president of the, United, of, of the university said. Let's get some more aerospace programs and students interested in flying, because it is indeed a noble, noble career. But most importantly, it's Tuskegee, thou pride of the swift growing south. Thank you. <laughs> Tuskegee and Macon County and having grown up here, it's very important that we know our history. Uh, as the old saying goes, if you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. So people sometimes associate the university and the Tuskegee Airmen and things of that nature as town and gown. But we know the natives of, of Tuskegee and Macon County that that is not the case. And especially under the leadership of Dr. Rashawn, uh, who's a community-oriented person, uh, He's brought the community into Tuskegee University and Tuskegee University into the community. Okay, did you see the movie yet, Red Tail? Oh, I saw the movie. I was very excited about the movie. Uh, I've seen the other version of the Tuskegee Airmen and I talked with some of the Tuskegee Airmen. They were not as pleased with the uh, first version as they are with the second version. So I think Mr. Lucas has done a 
fantastic job in capturing the real Tuskegee Airmen. Okay, now the community is responding well to this call for growth and development in historical perspective. What do you have to say about that? Why is this happening now? Uh, well, this is a great time and, and it's a time for change in Tuskegee and Macon County. And I think that the people are just feeling the spirit and they're, they're jumping on the bandwagon wagon, uh, in a sense because they, they know about the Tuskegee Airmen and it's just like the Carver Museum and, the, uh, and Booker T. Washington statue and this historic building that we're standing in front of now. It's all part of our history, uh, part of living history. And it's just good to see that the uh, Tuskegee Airmen, many of the Tuskegee Airmen, can see this come to fruition. So that's just great. Sir, I thank you so very much for taking this time. You're quite welcome. Chairman well. Maxwell, you know, something great is happening on this campus this weekend. That being Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I saw a movie yesterday, whereas the history and the guts and gall and pride of the Tuskegee Airmen were reflected. You were in that movie. Tell me what you think about that experience. Well, let me say, first of all, I'll tell you, I, I'm not a movie, real movie girl, but this is the first time that I can remember going to a movie where I was really brought to tears, and, and not with tears of pride and joy to see uh, uh, history. And, and see, you know, I know one of the Tuskegee Airmen. Matter of fact, one of my first supervisors at Tuskegee University uh, as an employee was Colonel Carter. And we talked about that and I had a chance to see him. And I just sat there and I just said, Lord, thank you. Because number one, it's a part of the vision that I've seen for this community. Number one, this type of activity, what is happening at Tuskegee University, is going to be the catalyst for which help transform this community socially and most important economically. Because what this event and what is doing, what's going on here, is going to change how we look at, uh, first of all, tourism in our community. Because really and truly, this is going to impact us economically. And I, I was so excited just if I had the opportunity to be a part of it and to sit there and watch and feel the pride because really and truly, you, you couldn't sit in that theater and not feel a sense of pride and joy, but in most of all, enthusiasm and anticipation for what is yet to come. Now, Mr. Lucas uh, is just a genius at this point as far as I'm concerned as well as a heroic in nature because he had the vision to pull this thing together in spite of obstacles. But those young uh, actors in that movie were out of sight, don't you think? Oh, I think so. And I think, and I think Mr. Lucas really responded to a call from Almighty God because when, when God puts something, gives you a vision, and others may not be able to see your vision. Others try to say that it, it's impossible. but. I know that it was a vision inspired by God because only God could have helped him pull it off. Because I don't know all of the obstacles that he had incurred, but I know he had some. But thanks be to Almighty God, when God had his hands on something, it, it is, it's, nobody can stop it. And that's why I believe that that movie is a part of the vision for this community, and that nobody's gonna be able to stop it. Because that movie, fits right into what the president of Tuskegee University has been talking about, the impact and the, the, the implication of, 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 of the impact of that movie fits right in with what the president of this great university said when he first came here, is that he is going to be working with this community to create a college community. A, a, it won't be a town and gown, but it will be a community where everybody will have an impact will feel the impact of Tuskegee University and all of the things that it has done and is capable of doing and will be doing. And thanks to uh, uh, Mr. Lucas, and first of all, thanks to Almighty God for just giving him the strength and the courage to do it in, in spite of all the obstacles. Now, what is the community's responsibility now that Mr. Lucas has uh, developed the movie all of his people have pulled together a program 
to make sure that it's delivered properly to us. What's our responsibility as community people at this point? First off, our responsibility really is to get, try to first, one, I encourage everybody to go see the movie. And, and we as a community, we're getting ready to tag along with what Tuskegee University is doing to help raise the awareness of this movie and the impact. Because we don't want any citizen in this community to just take it for granted. This is not just another movie. This is something special. We, were, we are planning a, a, a parade, red tail parade on Friday. But well, we're inviting all of the citizens to come out. We're going to paint this county red in honor of the coming out to help promote this movie this, this Friday. Because we want everybody to know that Tuskegee and Macon County is supporting this project 100%. And we want everybody to go see it and encourage everybody to, to really get on there, use their, 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 their social media to hype this thing up everywhere we go so that everybody would know about Tuskegee. And after that, we are getting ready to, to really help to, to, uh, take the residual and transform it into economic development for our community. I am Leon Fraser, the revealer here in Tuskegee, and I try and capture everything of significance I can to take to my community to make sure that people's consciousness are, are, are raised, you know, so we can be a learned people. And I walk past you and I see that you're sitting here looking important and I assume that you must have been a Tuskegee Airman, is that true? Well, yes, I'm a Tuskegee Airman. Okay, sir. What's your name, please? My name is Wilbur, Wilbur Mason. All right. This is my home, incidentally. Oh, very good. Tuskegee. Yes, yes. All right. Tell me what you think of these events that happen here on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Well, I got here on Friday, and it has been quite an eventful weekend for me. I am glad and so glad that I didn't, you know, miss it. And uh, I have really been, you know, thoroughly enjoyed with it. I think it is good, especially for our young people, you know. And uh, I seen the movie, I've seen it a couple, three times, but every time I see it, it's something always uh, new to me, you know? Now, there was some controversy about the first Tuskegee Airmen movie, mm -hmm. and Colonel Carter and some other people wasn't really satisfied with it, but what do you think about this movie as compared to the first movie that was put out? Well, as uh, compared to this one to the other one, I think this one is more realistic, and uh, I only saw one little insignificant thing in there that was a little out of context, but uh, it was nothing of any consequence. It's just a little something, you know, but overall, I think it's a wonderful movie. Now, do you think it's timely? The real deal coming out now, do you think this is timely as far as the truth of history being revealed to the world, really, not just black people, but all people? Oh, definitely, yes, to the world, that's true. Yes, I think it's a, a good thing for, the, for Mr. Lucas to put his money on the line and to produce a film for us. I think it's very timely. Well, actually, you know, this has been, what, 60-something years ago? So it is well overdue, well overdue. How does it make you feel for Mr. Lucas and other people with vision to still be focusing attention on what you great men did back there in the 40s? Well, uh, I think it's important because you'd be surprised that you're getting around and you find so many people who don't know the story, they don't know the history, or they don't know the legacy and whatnot, and uh, it's worth being known because if we could accomplish under the conditions that existed at our time, surely, surely the youngsters should be able to excel and exceed, you know, expectations in the nowadays. How old are you, Mr. Mason? I am 87. Now, did you think that there will still be this kind of interest in all of the personal sacrifices and everything that you guys made back in the 40s today? Or did you think this thing would have been a dwindling past? 
No. Well, you know, when back in the photos when this was going on, uh, I don't think anybody looked at it in terms of uh, history, uh, accomplishments, and whatnot at that time. Everybody was just concerned because we were at war, and uh, our youngsters were given a chance, and. Uh, we were just so excited to try to help and do the best we could in this program. So we didn't think of it as history then. You know, we were just doing the best we could with what we had. You know, history shows unity and, and comradeship between you guys, camaraderieship, I guess you'd call it, mm -hmm. between you guys back in those days. And we've okay. lost a lot of that now. Yeah. What was the difference between then and now? Well, okay, back then, you see, the Tuskegee Airmen helped each other. If one, say, was uh, a bit more uh, advanced in a subject or a topic and whatnot, and some of the others were not uh, 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 well versed on it, they would take them under the leadership and explain and try to bring them up to date as to just what was, you know, the situation of what the thing was all about. In other words, they helped them to understand. It was a comradeship. And uh, I don't know why. Hope that some of that is uh, landed on our youth today, but uh, back then there was just a big comradeship. And uh, they had one motto there. The motto was, failing is not an option. All right, that was a strong position, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, definitely, yeah. Strong position. Mm -hmm. Now, what's the community's uh, responsibility now that Mr. Lucas has made this personal sacrifice and total commitment? What must the community do now in order to uh, make sure that this movie accomplishes its mission? Well, I think the communities need to get the, with the youth and try to get them to understand and uh, interpret this movie in a way that it would be a benefit to them so that they would know that the sacrifices that others have made for them to be where they are today. And they should take advantage of this. But it is discouraging when we see so many of our youngsters who are just hanging out on the block and, you know, doing a useless thing in our jails full of them. So it is discouraging and uh, hopefully somewhere, some of them will see this and it would help them to have a better prospect for life uh, for themselves. Very good. Now, when were you in the Air Force and explain to the community, I guess you guys had Army Air Corps back then, right? Yeah, it was the Army Air Corps back okay, then. Okay, so explain when you went in and when you got out and what your tour of duty was while you were there, please. Well, as I uh, said, I believe a little bit ago, my home's here in Tuskegee. And this really was a part of my growing up. When I graduated from high school, I went out and applied for a job and got a job at the air base and in base supply. That's where they kept and received and issued the supplies for the Army Air Corps at that time. And uh, I worked there until the base closed in 1947. So I was not actually in service. I was civilian, working for the government at that time. Okay. So the rules are that if you were associated with the program, whether you were a civilian or in the military or whatever, between 1941 and 1949, that you are eligible to be an original Tuskegee Air. And I think that's a good thing because just trying to focus on the pilots would miss the whole boat. They could not fly without. Uh, their oh, base, definite, right? Definitely. Well, the old cliche is that uh, it takes 10 to 12 men on the ground to keep one in the air. Okay. So this program entailed uh, 14 or 15,000 people total. Okay. It was about a thousand, a little less than a thousand pilots. 
and uh, the rest of them were, you know, support crew because they had to be doctors and nurses and dentists and the technicians and laboratory people and, you know, the mechanics and whatever it takes to exist. Right. They had to be a composite group. Chief Anderson, the Tuskegee Airman that flew Eleanor Roosevelt around, he took time out of his life to teach me how, how to fly. And um, I own a plane to this day uh, because of that fact. I, I've actually made my home here in Tuskegee because I figure if it was good enough for, for him, it, it's good enough for me. And um, I'm just going to do my best to, to keep his work going and keep his legacy going and the work of so many others that made my life possible and, and the lives of so many the opportunities and freedoms that we have in this country possible and I'm going to do my, my, my part, my little two cents and it's because of him and people like him and, and I'm going to say people like you that are interested and, and active and, 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 and want to learn and want to do something. So I'm going to say thank you for, for your participation. And, yeah. Now tell me this, have you seen the new movie yet? <laughs> no, they had a screening this morning. I missed that one, but um, I hope to see one this afternoon. Okay. And um, if not, I'm going. I'm going anyway. I'll be going to pay for it in the theaters. Uh, absolutely, I'm going I hope. To pay I hope millions the of the rest of it. <laughs> I don't think we have to worry about people here in Tuskegee going to see the movie, but I'm definitely going to see okay. it in the theaters. I stand here today humbled by the task before us, grateful for the trust you've bestowed, mindful of the sacrifices borne by our ancestors. I thank President Bush for his service to our nation. As well as the generosity and cooperation he has shown throughout this transition. 44 Americans have now taken the presidential oath. The words have been spoken during rising tides of prosperity and the still waters of peace. Yet, every so often, the oath is taken amidst gathering clouds and raging storms. At these moments,
of black men and women have the audacity to dream and believe that they could fly. They didn't stop with the dream. They put the work in and saw it through. From their tenacity, a rural airstrip, and a flight training program going to historic motor field and an elite all-black squadron known <coughs> as the Tuskegee Airmen. The history, mystique, and contributions of the Tuskegee Airmen have been documented in many forms, museums, books, cable TV shows, and now through a new feature film. And I realized that a unique, what a unique experience I had, that not everyone had a family doctor who was black, who would whip you if you didn't deliver his newspapers. <laughs> or go to the barbershop and listen, yes, I went to the barbershop. <laughs> or go to the barbershop and listen to fighter cops tell stories. And yeah, I'm allowed to. That not everyone grew up with a historically black college as the center of their town that hosted world famous artists, singers, athletes, and dignitaries, including Dr. Martin Luther King. There's a common thread among the historic figures like Dr. King and those who were a part of the Tuskegee Airmen legacy. They had a dream. They had a plan. They had support. And it was not about them. It was always about the mission to serve. Dr. King and the Tuskegee Airmen didn't set out to achieve glory and recognition. They didn't work to become famous. They were famous for their works. Mm -hmm. The program itself consisted of pilots, mechanics, bombardiers, parachute riggers, nurses, air traffic controllers, navigators, administrative personnel, and dozens of other support jobs. We can honestly say, in the words of the late Eddie D, that we got our own thing. <laughs> and we're celebrating these airmen today with the Red Team. When I had the pleasure of talking to George Lucas about what it took to convince Hollywood that the story told, the story told in the movie Red Tales would appeal to a mass audience, it was a reminder of how far we've come and how far we still have to go. I am honored to introduce the cast of the cinematic tribute to the fight group of World War II known as the Red Tales. Would you please stand, Terrence Howard.
who were fighting for reminds us of the shoulders we're standing on. I don't know how many of you have seen the film, but those of you who saw the movie, and uh, you'll realize it's a woman who we're standing together in a circle. So everyone touch someone. runs over, and men are no longer willing to be plunged into the abyss of despair. There's a tragic misconception of time, from the strangely rational notion that there is something in the very flow of time that will inevitably cure all ills. Actually, time itself is neutral. It can be used either destructively or constructively. More and more, I feel that people of ill will have used time much more effectively than the people of goodwill. We will have to repent in this generation, not merely for the hateful words and actions of the bad people, but for the appalling silence of the good people. Human progress never rolls in on the wheels of inevitability. It comes from the tireless efforts of men willing to be co-workers with God. And without this hard work, time itself becomes an ally of the forces of social stagnation. We must use time creatively in the knowledge that time is always right to do the right thing. Now is the time to make real the promise of democracy and transform our pending national elegy into a creative song of brotherhood. Now is the time to lift our national policy from the quicksand of racial injustice to the solid rock of human dignity. It is really um, serendipitous, as was indicated by our illustrious speaker, that we today celebrate both Martin Luther King and the Tuskegee Airmen. These are not mutually exclusive concepts. There are many parallels. Both were determined to labor relentlessly and tirelessly to achieve their objectives, not just for their own individual careerist opportunism, nor merely to prove their own worth, but to demonstrate that our people as a whole should and could successfully aspire to greatness. Both were willing to put their lives and limbs on the line in defense of the ideals of freedom, justice, and equality. And this in the face of overwhelming violence and entrenched opposition. Both were willing to suffer the indignities of privation and arrest and imprisonment rather than submit to the quotidian horrors of American apartheid known as racial segregation. Both ultimately succeeded in establishing a permanent heroic legacy in the annals of African American accomplishment are revered by young and old alike and have designated national monuments 
on, and their bases of operation managed by the National Park Service. Both now serve as sources of inspiration to youth who have lifted the bar with respect to what youth can achieve. We are very fortunate here at Tuskegee University. We have a unique history among institutions of higher learning in this country. It has always been known, those at least who've read up from slavery, about the history of Booker T. Washington and George Washington Carver. Less is known about what has been accomplished over the years and the fact that uh, this university, although it's always received accolades from U.S. News and World Report and from Forbes in September and October of 2011, Washington Monthly reported that Tuskegee University, among all 309 baccalaureate colleges in this country, baccalaureate being those colleges who award degrees not primarily in the liberal arts, but in science, engineering, uh, technology, agriculture, veterinary medicine, and uh, architecture, that Tuskegee University, among all 309 universities uh, in the baccalaureate category nationwide, is now ranks number one. I am absolutely thrilled. Uh, I'm, I'm a product of this place. I was born and raised on this campus. I was born at John Andrew Hospital. With that young man over there, we were preschool, elementary school, high school, college. Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Explorer Scouts together. <laughs> so if anyone asks me the question, do I know Tom Jordan? I know Tom Jordan. <laughs> now, the fascination of this evening or today is that if there is any hope that higher education can do great things, let Tom Jordan and Lionel Richard be a perfect example. <laughs>
And so when people say to me, what do you feel about this wonderful, wonderful, historic action hero movie? I said, you really don't understand the true struggle of these guys and ladies. So speaking on behalf of Tom Clark, speaking on behalf of the kids who grew up around these wonderful people. Hallelujah, <laughs> hallelujah. history and uh, all the, uh, the rights, the, uh, the uh, strides that we've made for freedom, uh, everything from uh, being able to not just go in the front door, but able to be able to actually develop new doors. And uh, this is just great all the way around, you know. We've now every time I see you, you are hauling around a whole bunch of young people. Yeah, well. Tell me about that. Well, that, that we were raised by our elders and uh, the whole community raised each one of us. Uh, and, and what happened, if, if they saw us out there doing something we didn't have any business doing, they corrected us. But they also congratulated us, they shook our hands, they, they encouraged us on, and they taught us that uh, nothing was impossible. At that time, Tuskegee was all black. That's all we ever saw. The only people we ever saw that could uh, build anything, sell cars, build houses, the ones that were running things, 
ones that ran the campus, they were all black, and that's all we knew. And, um, and that, that, that was just a reality they put out there for us. And uh, they just showed us that the stars were the limit and, and beyond. So now, when these children read and learn about the Tuskegee Airmen and Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks and Amelia Boynton and Robinson and all of those people, wh what will they come out to think, you think? Yeah, in other words, that these are the ones that they can stand on the shoulders of. They can see the uh, adversities that they've overcome. And in this time, when things are set in a much more uh, way where opportunities are abundant, they're able to even accomplish more, and they're able to go beyond and, uh, and, and use those accomplishments as motivation, not to stop when adversity comes, but to continue on and to uh, fight not just for themselves, but for their people and for their country. But well, I don't want to thank you for being just a good black man who cares. That's, 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 that's the people who went before me. That's Tell all. me what you think about that movie, Red oh, Tail. It is excellent. It is excellent. It's what everyone should see. It will motivate our young people. Uh, it will you know, motivate our old people. It was just so stimulating. And uh, it, it just touched my soul. My father was a Tuskegee Airman, and I tell you, that um, I did cry, you know, uh, in the film. That was two to, of us there. Uh, to see what they went through, that uh, racism uh, really hurt him quite a bit. Uh, he didn't get a chance to, to fly, but he was a part of the ground crew. He was in the Signal Corps, and he was a mechanic that kept those planes flying. And at the end, when they paid tribute to all of those fine gentlemen, made me quite proud. His name was Captain Frank Clifford Eason. We're very proud of him. And we're very proud of all of the men who gave their lives who stood for right, for those who are still living that really have had the opportunity to hear how people respect them now, to see how the President of the United States of America, who is indeed a person of color, to receive them at the White House, for them to receive the Congressional Gold Medal for them to receive all of the honors that they so richly deserve. It is indeed humbling to be an offspring of one of the officers, but also to know and to have met many of the valiant men and the people that still continue the legacy. It was an honor and a privilege and the Rosa and Raymond Parks Institute for Self-Development, for which I co-founded with Rosa Parks, who indeed was born in Tuskegee, as I was, and who indeed suffered along with all of the other people of this great town and this great country, to my mother, Bertha Louise Wallace Eason, that she and two was a, a part of the, um, I, I can't think of uh, the name that were the um, women, in fact. Uh, that word is good enough, is just the women, because women have supported the, and the made The women everything. received the men and made them feel very proud. Um, it, it has been an honorable day. It is an honorable day and all of the excitement that continues to uh, be here um, that I want to be a part of all of it. And the Rosa and Raymond Parks Institute for Self-Development will carry on the legacy. My sister, Anita Eason Peak, uh, indeed carries forth the legacy and all of us that are associated with Rose and Raymond Parks, our honorary members, 
our advisory members, our Rosa Parks legacy ambassadors, and our wonderful Rosa Parks board of directors. I thank you. The history of Tuskegee is more important to me and to the future of the history of this country, not just black America but America at large. The direction that the country is headed into right now, it's very frightening. I've been all over the country for the last year or so, and from what I'm seeing and realizing is that black history is not important to a lot of people. But we have to remember that the history that the black people coming up from Africa shared with the American people here has been enormous. I ran into a lady who was the author of a book out in Oakland, California, and she took out all the creations and all of the inventions and all of the scientific discoveries that black Amer African Americans had done, and there was hardly anything left in America. When you take on everything that the black culture brought to this country, there was nothing hardly left. And so, looking at the book and reading it, I, um, I kind of felt um, compelled to talk to Chief again today about the Tuskegee Airmen movie that's coming out. The history of Tuskegee has influenced the world over through so many different phases. And the Tuskegee Airmen is just one of the main phases and one of the main focuses that has catapulted Tuskegee back into the limelight. I beg the city of Tuskegee to start trying to pull themselves up by the bootstraps, such as Booker T. Washington did when he came to Tuskegee in 1881. And also, I would like to say to the citizens of Tuskegee that they have so much to be thankful for and grateful for because Tuskegee is well appreciated and highly respected all over the entire world and we and we the citizens of Tuskegee including myself and the reason why I've chosen to stay here and help with the art and the sculptures and the things that I've done in the city and will continue to do is because there, this is a place and a hobnob of black history and black culture and I want to thank you again Chief for allowing me to say this. Thank you. Now, did we talk b before before the movie or after the movie? It was before the movie. Now, tell me what you think of this movie and what did that movie do for you and what can that movie do for the black culture? And America, the mentality of America, really. What the movie did for me, when I saw that movie, and the, and the way I like, you know, I'm an artist, I'm a graphic artist, and I'm an art, a fine artist, and. The, just the artwork itself in the movie. Each scene was like a work of art. Um, the director, uh, the producer, uh, George Lucas, when you get inside the characters, you learn who they were. These were all educated men, and, and particularly from down south, from Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana. They, the airmen um, were comprised of many of southern black men who were educated in the first place. And when they came here, they wanted to do something for their country. And, and for the first time, this movie seems to be more real than the first movie on the Tuskegee Airmen. This movie seems to um, delve more into the lives of each of the individuals. You get to know the characters. You get to feel the characters. You get to understand them and how important it was to make the t Tuskegee experiment. See, I didn't know it was an experiment, you know, such as the syphilis study. The Tuskegee experiment with the Tuskegee Airmen was amazing to me that people would think that black people couldn't fly, that black men didn't have sense enough to fly. And when you watch this movie, some of the maneuvers that they did, wow. I mean, it was just, it's, it's like watching something out of uh, the 20, 21st, 22nd, 23rd century, the way the, the dynamics and the, uh, the, diff, the technology in the movie, the direction that it's going, the action, the, the, the heartfelt, um, uh, tremendous things that Bill Davis, uh, General ba Davis, excuse me, went through to pass this through the Department of Justice and through the, uh, the military in particular and the government. And when I looked at the movie, I thought it was one of the greatest movies of all time. And I intend... Go ahead. Go ahead. I intend to, to get a group of people together and take them to the movies so I can support it financially. I've seen the movie, I've seen the screening, and Terrence Howard I've never seen him in a role like this, and this is the first time I've seen him like really play a character where you didn't look at Terrence Howard, the actor. You looked at Terrence Howard, the character. He was into the character. Cuba Gooding was into the character. Some of the other stars, like Luke White, who starred in um, Everybody Loves, Everybody Hates Chris, he was there. 
um, in the movie. It's just a good movie. I, I would, I would, I would insist on everybody paying to go to see the movie to make this one of the biggest movies of the year. This should be a blockbuster, and it should be a up for Academy Award nod. Now the scenes and the examples and the in-depth reach that they did in that movie reached down into my soul and brought tears from me, man. Did it affect you the same way? It did. That's what I was trying to get. I mean, you put it put it in a, a better terms than I did. But when you watch people and, and they gave them lives, they gave their lives and they were determined to fly. The airmen were determined. That was their life. That was their livelihood. That was their passion. And that was their life. And that's what I saw in the movie. And that's what I saw. I know a lot of the airmen. I got a chance to meet them for the past 20 something odd years. Colonel, Colonel Roosevelt Lewis, who I've talked about in the earlier interview, is one of the reasons why I feel, knowing him for so many years, that he's brought this element of the airmen and stayed on course and made sure a lot of this has happened in Tuscaloosa. Yeah, they rubbed off on him good, didn't they? They did. They did. It, it's yes, sad sir. that sometimes we, we try to um, rub out a part of our history that's not going away. When God is in the mix, you can't get rid of it anyway. If it's God's will, it's going to happen. And Colonel Lewis is a part of this history, a part of his legacy. He's kept the, Air, the uh, Tuskegee Airmen, the uh, Moten Field, open for many years. And he ran and I was there volunteering all the time. So, I mean, I was there with him. I saw him, you know, and, and he's here today with us. I ran into him yesterday. Yeah, I see him as that positive link between then and now. Between then and now. Colonel Lewis, Colonel Roosevelt Lewis, and he's a great person. Also, I wanted to say about the movie and about the legacy of Tuskegee is that a lot, a few of the airmen are still living and it's up to us to keep their legacy alive. It's up to you children in Tuskegee and around the world to keep the Tuskegee Airmen legacy alive because you are the future. I ran into some young people earlier this morning who are here. The Red Tail was something that I had halfway expected but it really surpassed my imagination. I saw so much of the, the daring and the importance of being oneself in that, uh, the red tail. I saw people whom we have that we don't know anything about. Give them a chance. And that's a typical example of giving people a chance. And you don't take it. You don't ask them to give it to you. You take it. And I saw where they had everything that it takes to stop this war. And if you had given them the chance from the very beginning, there would never have been no war. These people, these men, just had to take over. And they wanted to know that if they had been given a chance at the beginning, that they would have stopped this war long ago. And the thing about the, what I liked about the the heads of the of the red tail was that they spoke their minds, and they didn't have to do it Amen. in an anger angered way, but they did it by having choice and having the diplomacy and letting these people know that they knew what they were talking about. I compared them also with what happened in Selma, Alabama, where those African Americans who had their children or had their wives and they could not go on the Air Force Base. This is the same time as the Air Force Base. They had to go outside and find a place to stay, and if they didn't have a place to stay, then shame on them, and yet they're working for the land of the free and the home of the brave. And these men got together. I mean, it shows unity. It shows the dependence, and it shows how they had that dogmatic tenacity to say that I can do it. I'm willing to do it. And that uh, it, it, it taught, it really taught people of color, of, of the whites, just what we could do if you gave them a chance. And 
it didn't only happen in the service, but it happened all over this country because they learned that African Americans are just like anybody else and give them a chance and they would turn this world upside down. Yeah.